Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion for Wednesday, August 26, 2020. I'm Mark, the Associate Pastor of the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and I welcome you into this time of daily devotion. I encourage you to light a candle or find a space or time in your day. Grab something that you can hold. Grab your Bible or Bible app. Uh, whatever you need to focus yourself. Grab a journal or something to write on. If that is how best you can focus, meditate, contemplate, devote your time, your love to God and to neighbor. Would you hear the invocation as we invite God into this time and place? Almighty God, you have sent Jesus to take our nature upon himself and to be for us sign and savior. Grant that by the power of your spirit, Christ may be born within us to the end that our ministry may be pleasing to you and helpful to your people. We pray in the name and spirit of Christ. Amen. We continue to reflect on Psalm 1 this week. We'll read it again in its entirety. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff, let the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. May God bless the reading of the psalm today. Yesterday we talked about the, the first verse, but today I want to talk about the second verse. But his delight, the blessed person, the blessed man, is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord, perhaps uh, the, as, as the uh, psalmist would write, the Old Testament law, the law of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And he meditates on that law day and night. Of course, Jesus came and helped us understand the point of those 600 plus laws. To love God, to love neighbor, to do justice, to love mercy, to forgive. All of these things uh, are the law of God. You know, Jesus says, you know, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. This is my commandment. Love each other as I have loved you with agape love, self-giving love, self-sacrificing love, all in love. And so do you delight? I love that word, delight. Do you delight in the law of the Lord? Do you delight in the things Jesus has said? And we're about to read some things Jesus says. And I want you to think, do you delight in these things? Do you meditate on them day and night? I, I like to think about the things Jesus said throughout my day, throughout my evening, when, when things are tough, to remind myself of the kind of teachings that the great teacher, that my teacher, my Savior, my Christ, my Lord, my rabbi, the kind of things he taught, the kind of things he wants me to teach. And then I have to think about that because that's part of my job. <laughs> but do you think about it? And we'll talk a little bit tomorrow about that, that uh, third verse. But I want you just to think about delighting in the law of the Lord, especially as we read <clears throat> part of <clears throat> the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, the Sermon on the Mount comes from the Gospel of Matthew. And there's a lot of teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. And it's not always things that we appreciate. So <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 1, excuse me. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full, but when you pray, go into your closet, page, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men for what they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Don't store up treasures for yourself on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness! No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. May God bless the reading of the gospel. I think it's a wonderful exercise to take on the Sermon on the Mount, um, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And it's just heaped with, it's just heaped with commandments, <laughs> teachings. John Wesley wrote something akin to 25 sermons on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, a, a large church pastor that I know did an entire year on the Sermon on the Mount because there is just so much in it. And even in the passage, the 24 verses I read today, there is so much, but our theme is true greatness. And again, over and over again, Jesus is reminding us. You're not great because of what other people think about you. You're not great because of what you own or how much wealth you have. You're not great because of your job or your title or who sees you do what. You're not great because of how much money you give to the church or to charity. You're not great because of how much work you do or how uh, how nice you are, or all, all of these things, when, 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 it's, when it's done to try to get attention, when it's done to make you feel good. Uh, and certainly doing good things makes you feel good, and there's something wrong with that. But some people I have experienced thrive on it to a point where that's the only reason they're doing good things, because they want to feel good. They want to feel, and often then they start feeling better than others. And that's a good, totally besides the point. And so Jesus reminds us, hey, when you pray, just pray. And, and if you don't know the words, don't worry about it. Just, just groan, because God knows what you need. And when you fast, and I hope fasting is part of your life. Maybe it's not fasting from food because of um, medical or, or, or just life situations that make that difficult, but fasting from talk radio, fasting from politics, fasting from Facebook, 
<laughs> I mean, fasting from what? I mean, there are things that are worth fasting from. Fasting from drama. <laughs> Not like the theater, but you know, like interpersonal drama. And don't do it to, to make a spectacle of yourself. Hey, I fasted for 72 hours. Look at me. No, just it's something you do so that you can become closer to God. Prayer is something you do so that you can become closer to God, so that you can hear God, so that you can understand, so that you can then encounter other people and share that with others, serve others. And service is something you do because you have that joy. So, so the psalm reminded us to delight in the law. And so as you heard those, do you delight in that? I, I mean, I delight in the fact that we worship a God who... It isn't about talk, who, who isn't about showiness, who isn't about wealth and power and prestige and status, but who is just about loving others and who's just about wanting the best for everyone. Uh, and that's the world I want to live in because that's the kingdom of heaven. And, and I've seen parts of it. I mean, I've seen parts of it here on earth, moments of it, and, and it's blessed. Uh, and, and then we kind of fall back into our own ways and, and we, we have to remind ourselves and that's okay. It's an ongoing concern. And so I just, I just encourage you, do what you do for God and God alone. Don't do it for yourself. Don't, don't do it for other people. Do it because you are delighting in it. I, I do these devotions not, um, you know, not just because it, it's something... Um, you know, that I feel I need to do for my job or, um, you know, because I like, I mean, I do get something out of it very truthfully, but um, it's something I do for God and something I think that I can do so other people can have time with God. And that's what's most important for me is that we can share some time with God every single day. And, and that's okay. <laughs> and it's okay to feel good about it. And it's okay to be nourished by it. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but... You know, don't go around saying, well, I, I listened to all of Pastor Mark's devotions this week. Have you? No, right. That's not the point of it. Um, the, the point is to be with God uh, and invite other people to be with God. Hey, you know, have you been doing these? Let's, you know, let's do it together and talk about it. That's, that's good. Let's do that. I have a prayer today, a short prayer from I Will Lift Up Mine Eyes by Glenn Clark. And uh, just be in an attitude of prayer with me as we pray this prayer. Our Father, we take our loved ones and all those who need us deeply into our hearts. And there we give them completely to you. May your peace, the peace which passes all understanding, rest with them. Bringing them perfect fulfillment to all of their needs. And let's pray together. The prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, hear the benediction. And now may the Spirit which was in Jesus Christ, be in you and in me, enabling us to know God's will and empowering us to do God's will. Until tomorrow, friends. Amen.